We hear sound because our ears can detect vibrations in the air, which come from sources like everyday objects, speakers, and other people talking. These vibrations travel through the air as areas with higher pressure, known as compressions, and areas with lower pressure, known as rarefactions, bounce back and forth, carrying this longitudinal wave forward. If we graph the air pressure across the space that the sound is traveling through, we can see the wave shape of the sound. This is Inspecto, and this video will be all about sound frequencies, wave shapes, and the math behind it all. You probably know that a sound's pitch is dependent on the frequency of its sound wave. Frequency and pitch hold an exponential relationship, meaning that a difference of a certain number of hertz, for example a 200 hertz difference, from 200 to 400 hertz, and from 400 to 600 hertz, will not result in the same perceived difference in pitch. Rather, the same ratio between different frequencies, for example, a 1 to 2 ratio from 200 to 400 hertz, and then from 400 to 800 hertz, is what will result in the same perceived difference in pitch. How does this tie into music and its familiar 12 note scale? Two notes that are one octave apart are named the same and kind of sound like they are the same note. But one is higher pitch and one is lower. This important gap of the octave is precisely a double in frequency. All other note intervals are derived from this. If each semitone is one twelfth of an octave, the ratio of a semitone would be the twelfth root of two or 2 to the power of 1 12th. This way, to increase a frequency by one semitone, it can simply be multiplied by 2 to the 1 12th. Increasing that frequency by 12 semitones, or an octave, it would be multiplied 12 times, which is 2 to the 1 12th to the power of 12. In other words, 2 to the power of 12 over 12, which is just multiplying it by 2. Combinations of two notes at certain intervals can sound consonant, which means they sound like they agree with each other when the two frequencies have a simple whole number ratio. For example, the octave has a ratio of 1 to 2. Really simple ratio. Other than the octave, the most consonant interval is arguably the perfect fifth, which is 7 semitones. Let's see what 2 to the power of 7 over 12 is. It is approximately 1.498 which is quite close to 1.5. 1 to 1 1.5 simplifies to 2 to 3, another really simple ratio. The reason a simple whole number ratio sounds so consonant probably has to do with the period of the resulting wave when the two waves are added together. With a 1 to 2 ratio, the resulting wave's period is 1 times the lower frequency wave and 2 times the higher frequency wave. With a 2 to 3 ratio, the resulting period is 2 times the lower frequency wave and 3 times the higher frequency wave. These simple ratios make it easy for our brains to notice a regular pattern when the two notes are added together. Now let's hear what a dissonant interval sounds like, one where the notes sound like they disagree with each other. The most dissonant interval is arguably the tritone, which is 6 semitones. 2 to the power of 6 over 12, or 1 half, is just square root of 2, equal to about 1.4142. This results in an irrational ratio which isn't close to any simple ratio, resulting in a very irregular pattern when the waves of notes one tritone apart are added together. A chord consists of three or more notes. The most consonant chord is arguably the basic major triad, which is just a root, a perfect fifth, and a major third added in the middle. Four semitones above the root. 2 to the power of 4 over 12 is about 1.26, which is close to 1 and a quarter. This results in, once again, quite a simple ratio of 4 to 5. However, to see that dissonant intervals also have their roles, we can look at jazz chords such as the dominant 7th chord,
and diminished seventh chord. Which both have dissonance intervals in them, but sound nice. Sinusoidal waves are the simplest waves that us humans can hear. We perceive them to be only one frequency. Now, the Fourier theorem states that periodic functions that are reasonably continuous can often be expressed as the sum of different sinusoidal functions. For sound, this means that the sounds we hear can be broken down into a combination of many simple sinusoidal waves, each with their respective frequencies. This information is very important to understanding the sounds produced by musical instruments or when synthesizing our own musical sounds. The ratios of intervals within the 12 note scale range from 1 to 2 in 2 to the 1 12th geometric intervals. But if we look at frequencies that are integer multiples of the fundamental frequency, like 2 times, 3 times, 4 times, 5 times, etc. Those form a whole nother system known as the harmonic series. The significance of the harmonic series is that adding on these harmonics doesn't change the period of the fundamental. As a result, the combined sound sounds tonal. It's very clear what pitch or note the sound is. It's just the pitch of the fundamental frequency. On the flip side of this, when a sound contains frequencies that are not in the harmonic series of its fundamental frequency, known as inharmonic frequencies, it sounds more atonal. In other words, it's harder to tell its pitch or note. Comparing the frequencies of a piano to a drum, we can see that the tonal instrument does have more harmonic frequencies. In fact, we can theoretically recreate a musical instrument digitally if we use a synthesizer to match all its frequencies, including its fundamental, harmonic, and inharmonic frequencies. There are of course other factors to match as well, but those are the most important. The science of sound waves also applies to the world of sound design, which is the artificial creation of instruments and sound effects, such as in electronic music. Sound design is all about the combination and manipulation of wave shapes, which come in four basic forms. The sine wave, triangle wave, square wave, and saw wave. The way that these waves each sound can be explained by how they can be broken down into simpler sinusoidal waves, each with their own frequency. First of all, the sine wave sounds the simplest, as it only represents one frequency. However, here's an equation that represents an infinite sum of waves. Since it's a wave, it's a function of time, with t being the time, and f being the fundamental frequency. The sigma means that many copies of this expression are being added up with increasing values of k. This scales up the input of the sine function, increasing the frequency of successive waves, but scales down the output of the sine function, decreasing the amplitude of successive waves. This specific equation is for the square wave. As you can see, the expression uses 2k-1 instead of k, which gives all the odd integers. This means that all the odd harmonics are present in a square wave, in addition to the fundamental which is why it sounds so full compared to the sine wave. Starting as one sine wave and adding more and more sine waves following this equation, we can see that the sum does approach the shape of a square wave. The triangle wave can be made by also adding up the odd harmonics, but this time making every second one, that is the first, fifth, ninth, etc, negative. And the denominator is squared, making the successive harmonics decrease in amplitude much faster. That's why if we look at an analyzer, the harmonics of a triangle wave are not as rich as those of a square wave. And you can hear it too. Here's a triangle wave. And here's a square wave. The saw wave can be made by adding up all the harmonics, 
not just the odd ones, and making every second one negative. Having all harmonics is what makes the saw wave the richest sounding wave out of all the basic wave shapes. And that's why it is often used for elements in electronic music that need to have a big, rich sound. This could be a super saw, which is used to voice thick chords, a pad, which is used to fill up the atmosphere, or even a saw bass, which can be used for an aggressive low end. Altogether, they sound like this. The other waves, of course, also have their place. For example, a square wave could be used to make 8-bit chiptune sounds. A triangle wave could also be used to make some unique lead sounds. And lastly, a distorted sine wave can be used to make an 808. So that was some of the basic math behind music and sound synthesis which hopefully can now give you a fresh perspective when encountering music and instruments. Hope you enjoyed the video, until next time.